at 10. Good evening, everyone. I'm Lisa Wilkins. And I'm Bobby Ray Cardwell. Thanks for joining us tonight. The government is still up and running tonight, at least for the next 14 days. But if something isn't done very soon, it'll be back to a government shutdown. Right now, budget talks are on hold for a week as both sides explore areas for compromise. But as Sandy Gilmore reports tonight, finding common ground may take more than a week. Workers moved to clear the White House from under tons of snow. The president vetoed a Republican plan to overhaul the nation's welfare programs and end the federal guarantee of aid to the poor. The veto was no surprise and is expected to stand. Well, after several months of discussion, the city of Lynn Haven is taking on the responsibility of a city-owned golf course. News Channel 7 Susanna Packing is following the story. She joins us. According to Panama City Beach Council members who finalized another step today toward the beach's beautification process. A new sign ordinance that's in effect now means stricter sign guidelines for beach businesses. Among other details in the plan, changes deal with height, width, and color turning towards a more conservative look. Council members tell us the idea is to clean up the beach so it's even more appealing to tourists. We want our place to um, have an impact when people come to visit the, that would they want to share when they go back that says that we don't have a, a tacky image with uh, uh, all types of signs. Um, uh, now, if your signs are already in place, they don't have to fit the new guidelines until the year 2001. But if you're putting up any new signs or changing any old ones, you better make sure they follow the new guidelines. A trip to some parts of Panama City Beach tonight isn't a pretty sight. This is what you could see on the beach today. Bulldozers taking sand away from the shoreline. It is an ugly sight, but the owners of the Boardwalk Beach Resort have permits to dig. They tell us it's for a restoration project that will make the beach even better than before Opal ripped up the dunes. But the process to make it better isn't sitting well with folks visiting from the north. Yes, I mean, last year we had almost twice as much beach, you know, as we've got this year. So, uh, you know, and as I said, I mean, we would have been happy with the beach that was, but not what they're doing here. This is terrible. The digging is creating holes along the beach. That's apparently from the workers rushing to get the jobs done. Their permit expires at midnight. An investigation into some wrongdoing by Bay County leaders is over tonight. After today's grenade attack. Well, you may have noticed folks aren't as bundled up tonight as they were last night. It may have something to do with the warmer temperatures we're getting. Rob Wilson is in now with a first look at our forecast. Rob? Well, Nisa, it's kind of interesting, actually. The temperature robbed the Cottondale Hardys last year. 22-year-old Victor and 19-year-old Willie Dozer are serving time now for that crime after pleading guilty this week to six counts of kidnapping in that robbery. Management says it's learned an awful lot from this experience, especially the importance of training employees to stay calm during a crisis. We go through some training processes with our people to make them aware of people that look... And night. Florida leaders realize folks in our state want something done about the crime problem. So tonight, the state can boast of having the nation's first statewide coalition of law enforcement agencies and researchers, or called FLIRC. Its organizers say its number one priority is keeping Florida's streets safe. We want to look at ways that police can manage the use of force by their police officers. We want to look at ways that police departments can regulate and control the levels of stress among their police officers. We're going to look at different effective ways of training officers, recruiting officers, and placing officers in their most effective uh, modes of, of uh, assignment. Over the next 18 months, FLIRC will hold meetings across the state to research the needs of law enforcement. Well, imagine spending four hours a day on a bus just to get to and from school. A balanced federal budget. That prospect has already sent some negative signals to the stock market. As Sandy Gilmore reports, the differences are great, not just in dollar amounts, but in policy. Status of our budget. The president opened a cabinet meeting saying he still wanted a balanced budget, but if not. The weather, here's Bill Shivert with a first look at our forecast. All right, guys, not too much problem tonight. It's going to be kind of chilly. I'll have more attack. The cold weather we've had this week has driven up the demand for falling. That's what folks in the Northeast are dealing with again today. The only good news, it was light snow. The bad news, another possibly heavy storm is on its way. Mark Strassman joins us now with more. As they recover from the blizzard, they get ready for the storm. More snow predicted. 
out on a treacherous road. So they'll keep plowing and shoveling as this week of whiteout now drifts into Thursday and the prospect of still more snow. On Thursday, thousands of federal employees will head back to the office after their unintended vacation of more than three weeks. How long they stay at the office, like everything else here, depends on the weather. Mark Strassman, NBC News, Washington. Well, Florida's tourism officials are taking advantage of the blizzard of 96. They're looking for ways to entice snow-weary northerners to the Sunshine State. Officials are working on it. Well, sports is still ahead for us. Scott takes us to Chicago for a matchup between the best in the West and the best in the East. Pull up north. you haven't been sick yet this season, you're definitely the exception. Isn't that the truth? But is what you're suffering from the flu or just a bad cold? Ileana Bravo reports tonight, you may be feeling the symptoms of the flu, but in fact, you may only have a virus. You're either sneezing, stuffy, and shell-shocked. Folks with asthma or other chronic illnesses, doctors do still disagree, though, over whether all the rest of us who are healthy should get the shot because there are rare side effects. Well, up next, if you're afraid of getting way too much sun but you're still a slave to fashion, we have one answer for you. Mm -hmm. And Bill Schubert answers your questions about the best time to go fishing. That's when we come back. Widespread controversy. Is this an epidemic? Watch the new occurrent affair. Well, if you plan to do some fishing tomorrow morning, I'm not sure what's biting with 52. So Wilkins. And I'm Bobby Ray Cardwell. How safe do your kids feel at school? A new study shows kids are aware of crime going on in their schools, and they're also willing to do something about it. Teachers, administrators, and cops are trying to get kids involved in the fight against crime. And one study shows that effort is paying off. News Channel 7's Susanna Packing is following the story. She joins us now from the newsroom with more. Susanna? Well, Bobby Ray, safety is concerned. That puts us right down the middle. Now, some of the more dangerous metropolitan cities in the nation, Tampa, Miami, and Gainesville. That's all according to statistics from the FBI during 1994. Now, some victims of crime in Jackson and Houston counties are getting some good news tonight. Four thieves who stole from them, all from Cottonwood, have been caught. But two others are still wanted in connection with the more than 30 burglaries. Those home burglaries are all happened over the holidays, and since then, authorities in both counties have recovered some of the stolen goods. This morning, a few of the victims reclaimed a little of what they've lost, but others weren't as fortunate. I don't think I'll ever see any of it again. I don't see my jewelry here. And I'm afraid it's just gone for good. Well, authorities tell us they're lucky when they, they are able to recover any of the stolen goods. But they say all too often, by the time they finish their job, the thieves are back on the streets committing the same crimes. A violent crime spree near St. Petersburg has left. Mike Vasilinda explains the $80 million problem that has city and county governments fighting mad this year. By the time the bulldozers are done and a shopping... Washington. Follow-up storm dropped several more inches. Abnormal for a change uh, by the middle of next week, huh? Sounds wonderful. <sighs> Just gonna sit back and enjoy it. Okay, it's, it's kind of cold outside. I've been telling you about this, though. Forecast. As long as those warm temperatures are on the That's way. Right. Mm -hmm. great. You betcha. Thanks, Thanks Bill. Bill. Okay. Up next in sports, we'll head over to Gulf Coast. That's where the Commodores get in their final game before their conference season begins. Scott has... Scott Rossman joins us now with our sports. A look at Juco hoops. Yeah, maybe cold outside, but plenty warm inside the gym. The Gulf Coast basketball team beginning its... But we're going into oh, yeah. it. Yeah. Thanks, okay. Scott. Thanks a lot, Scott. Well, still ahead, it's a silent killer with most folks not realizing what's happening. We'll show you how to spot the signs of carbon monoxide poisoning. But first, get your numbers ready. Your Fantasy Five drawing is coming right up. Good luck. These are the final days to buy sale-priced Imperial... Tonight's Health Watch is brought to you in part by Gulf Coast Eye Clinic, providing comprehensive eye care since 1973. They're calling it an epidemic of carbon monoxide poisoning up and down the East Coast, every place hit by a lot of snow. Now, most are cases where folks were overcome sitting in their cars with the engines running.
preparations are already well underway. Here's a look at some coming up. Tomorrow morning, be at the Bay County Courthouse at 1030 to take part in a march. Then Sunday at 330, you can be part of a memorial service at the Second West Baptist Church in Jackson County. And the big day, Monday. The celebration kicks off at 1030 at McKenzie Park. It'll be a day-long festival packed with music and an awful lot of fun. I was there last year. It sure was a lot of fun. I'll be there uh, this year. Yeah. Get on out. Sing it out there this yeah, year. Enjoy the, enjoy the good weather of the weekend. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. It's going to be absolutely fantastic. Thanks, Bill. You have you to thank for that. That'll wrap it up for us tonight. Have a great weekend, everybody. Get out and enjoy it. We'll see you later.